What's up, Ryan? Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you joining us. Our first Patreon, our first big supporter of the whole thing. Of our yes. twenty of our twenty one subscribers, you you have more subscribers. I get pumped up to twenty two. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think somebody left pretty quickly afterwards. <laughs> if I can't Beauty. even get an episode out without missing recording my audio, then you know what I mean. We got problems. We have still got yes, problems. The- the beauty of these small podcasts, we can have, uh, you, we don't necessarily need to grab on world famous people, but per, perhaps designers that will become world famous eventually. Well, more, more famous than doing more stuff than we're doing, I tell you that much right now. But um, <laughs> no, look, the biggest thing here is, is honestly, dude, we just, we like to just talk about games, right? We like to talk about game design. Calvin and I met uh, a number of years ago, just fell in love with just chatting about the philosophy of game design, what we were doing, and kind of keeping ourselves uh, in that loop of like constantly looking out and learning, right? Just instead of always just being like uh, vision focused of just what am I doing right now? Like like staring at staring into the void of game development and just just kind of trying to do it, but peek our heads above the curve a little bit more too, and just be like, all right, well, we don't get to have these like kind of chats and stuff like that. You know what I mean? We don't get to just like talk to our peers about you know what do you love like what do you like to do and, and what do you enjoy about this whole crazy experience of of creation uh you know what i mean in our own little bubbles right because a lot of the times so i feel like we're making stuff we're making stuff for us we're not making stuff for like the general you know for like big general public stuff especially when we're not doing it on the indie side but i do it mostly primarily for that big like how do I make a million dollars right now for this big corporate conglomerate? Um, and I think that dichotomy is always very interesting, right? Like it's it's two very different sides of the of the coin. Like you guys are very much doing it for the the passion, the love, and enjoyment of the stuff, and uh, and <laughs> we all try to to try to find that in some way. You know what I mean? So I appreciate you coming on, and just chatting to us for an hour. Uh, like I'd love to know a little bit more about you. Can you give us the high level? Who are you, Ron? Uh, so I've been. Uh, I guess the start was I did the uh, game design and development course uh, with Calvin, nice. uh, and then after that went uh, at least job wise did web development for a while. And then when the pandemic happened, I actually got a chance to uh, move over to doing Unity development. So that's what I've been doing. At a super uh, interesting company, though, right? Like, uh, not security company. Yeah. Like. But doing Unity development with those guys, I was very curious when I saw that because I was like, okay, super, seemed like, you know, I mean, non traditional, but I'd love to know, like, what does that look like? Like, what is the kind of day to day there? Is there projects that you're working on to, that you can talk about there? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it is a lot of it's like side projects. It's kind of like the company wanted to be very forward thinking with like, oh, let's do VR. So they want to set up a whole VR thing. Um, so that's trying to bring me on to do some of that stuff. But I love uh, it. You do that's love. super lucky, actually. Like, um, were you able to skip the line and be like, hey, I knew, I already know Unity. Uh, grab me or like. How did you kind of stop? Yeah, were you in already, or and then they pivoted into that type of stuff, or? No, no, I, I, I uh, like I said, it was with the pandemic. I was just looking at Unity developer jobs. Yeah. Um, and I, I was also at the point of like I could just kind of go anywhere, move anywhere. Uh, like I didn't have a whole bunch of. Uh, it, it wasn't like I had like family and friends and stuff all tying me down. So it's like I can you know move across country. Love uh, it. Where are you in the world right now? Uh, so I am uh, near Washington D.C. Oh, not so bad. On the East Coast. Not so bad. What's the weather like? <laughs> you, like, is it is it still getting cold? Have you guys? We're almost out. We're almost out. We got one more day of snow, <laughs> and then that's it. I hope. Well, and it's. I it's, really hope. Uh, <laughs> you know, talking with my parents, because they're they're in uh, Colorado uh, as well, uh, but that. Uh, They'll say, oh, hey, it was cold, and then, like, two or three days later is when we'll get a little bit of rain, and it'll get cold. So I can, you know, just the way the winds blow, you know, know a little bit no, so <laughs> of see. future forecast. So you get to work with VR. You're just working with general, the, the Unity VR framework. So you're well, uh, doing, doing AR stuff, stuff, AR uh, stuff. Uh, right now. Oh, nice. And, and then 
So it's like, like oh, I walk up to a server bank and I can kind of use my phone and, and it can tell me like what's going on. I mean, we're virtualizing the office right now as just a, uh, just as an example. It's just they had a model of the office and then it was like here, let's put this in AR so now you can look around. Oh, the, the, uh, what kind of productivity do they think they're gonna get out of things like that? Like what's the what's the overarching goal? It's to show it off. <laughs> it's it's still in the like side project. Like here's the things that we can do. Then can we bring on more people and do more with this? So. No, I like I, that. Yeah. Yeah, and I I think there's been a, f a few different jobs I've had where I'm kind of like the side project guy, to hopefully turn it into something else, but. No, yeah. That historically, that... hasn't worked out for me very well, as <laughs> <laughs> I bounced around a few different jobs because of it. Yeah, but that's you I mean it's you get to do cool stuff in the burst, and I think that that's that's one of the nicest things that's a takeaway from a lot of those things, right? Uh, if you end up doing kind of cool stuff on one individual project that's very one-off and not really, you know what I mean, not this like long tail. We know this is gonna work or some some things like that. Those can be really boring. But you probably face some daily challenges and get to get into some real meat that uh, you don't get to. Not everybody gets to deal with like all the time. Like, I mean, AR is definitely the forefront. People are really trying to crack what the hell, <laughs> how the hell can we use this thing in a meaningful way, right? Uh, and I like the idea of trying to say like, all right, let's just start with digitize the office and then see what we can tack on from there. Like, give us a base, get us something, yeah. and mm -hmm. then let's see if we can like spin off some ideation from there. So. I love that. That's pretty sweet. Are you enjoying it, by the way? Yeah, it's not bad. I have never really been in a team, and I feel like my programming is not good. <laughs> it doesn't get any better because I'm not with it. And like I said, because being the side project, like that's what happened with the previous jobs, was like, oh, you're the first person to get cut. So yeah. this job's fairly stable, but it, this again, it's sort of a side project that doesn't have a ton of focus, so... I don't entirely know where I'm going with it or yeah. <laughs> how long, because I've bounced around projects at this company too. So mm -hmm. it's... as soon as I, it I... goes away from mono develops, I'm like, fucking, this is, I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> I don't, I've lost, I've lost. I can't I've figure sort out. of been in similar shoes where I was at an enterprise company, but they also had a, they're trying to spin off a VR division. And I totally understand why they might do even even throw away like I, I don't I don't want to I'm not trying to downplay it but I mean like projects that don't have obvious uh, benefit is because they really they want to start building up that knowledge base and like build up the skill sets within the team kind of like an RPG or management game so uh, I don't know it's kind of a fun position to be in but yeah like you said it can also because I was in the position there at some point they're like you know what this VR stuff isn't uh, let's let's move away from this and let's just cut the whole thing so yeah but ryan you've been making indie projects you know i mean your own personal stuff for about a decade right 10 years yeah or so? it, yeah uh, at least uh that's uh, i think a couple years back i did a youtube video that was you know 10 years of indie games and stuff and i do at least a couple game jams every year and other yeah side like projects in the, and that's how i got that unity developer job was because of doing all those projects on the side no, consistently I, I love it absolutely um i i was actually like watching that video specifically like the the top one on your youtube for it and some of your early stuff i would say like fucking bring it back dude bring it back the the four-dimensional match three game that goes around the houses uh is sick it's absolutely class but you've worked on a bunch of different stuff let's just go down so you your board game how is that going the gnomes and gardens yeah uh, that that was a fun thing that i haven't touched in a while <laughs> that's fine no i get that absolutely that, that was kind of like i uh it, it was one of those like it hit an impasse of like i i was aiming for like uh i, I didn't want to make it too complex i wanted to make it more like family friendly but i think the uh to really market it, would I, I would need to either go a lot more complex or go in a different direction with it. And, and uh, yeah, what do you think was the? Do you feel like just it's just the marketing side of things? You you hit that roadblock of like 
got it to a point where you f- you still feel like it's like a good game or you like it's an enjoyable experience? Can yeah, you walk, yeah, no, can you walk I, I me think it's. A bit? Uh, so it's sort of uh, I, and a lot of the. Uh, like I started with something like Sushi Go, with the drafting, and then. Um, I don't know if I should pull it up or not, or if I. Oh yeah, no, you're good. Uh, it, if yeah. you if you want to, uh, by all means, I'm actually just um, uh, watching it here on the on the side as well too. We can we can talk about it straight up. I can just. Uh, here. Yeah, because I have a whole like digital version that I did too. I think this one's the. Yeah, that's the tabletop that simulator. But... Yeah, because this is out of date with that, like, uh, the daisy there is supposed to be a, a wild, but in this in this version it was just a single. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're going into thinking about starting this, right, where does, the, where does your inspiration come from that says, like, okay, that's what I want to work on right now? Well, this one, I just, I love gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> I made my profile icons a gnome, and... This you have a lot. You have a character generator that's so cute as well too. I love that. Yeah, yeah. And like, those are all these little small characters as well too. Yeah, this is. I should update this at some point too. <laughs> yeah, this this one I was a little afraid of, uh, just because I I didn't want to make it too easy to generate a ton of characters because then it's like oh you could pump that out for NFTs and I'm like that's I I don't want somebody to do that so. Well, I could sue him after that. Using my fucking heart. Using my shit. Um, but I genuinely, yeah, like, what was, oh, we can get into this at a certain other point, because you have loads of facets of, you've obviously touched every corner of the engine very clearly. Like, you have a good mastery of, of what's going on uh, and a good idea of how to put all of these things together uh, and get the playable game you know what I mean, as fast as possible, or at least get to some, get to the fun, like, quickly, and I love that. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, do a game jam, yeah, because that was, like, this was my 10th year of doing a global game jam, okay. I didn't have too much time this year, but <laughs> I was, managed to get at least something out, so. Was this um, a game jam project as well, too, that turned into something else, or? No, this was actually, uh, I did this as part of the, think like a game designer, uh, had a, a whole course of like we're gonna take you from you know an idea to make a whole board game and then actually pitch it to publishers and uh, that's where I got kind of the lukewarm reception from publishers of like you know this would need a little more work and you know there's a lot of stuff that's like this so ooh yeah I don't know the the like this stuff you know what I mean I think that the biggest thing for me is like as somebody who is like working on a little card game as well too right um our game is a lot like other games as well too but that's actually almost like a good selling point is in in places it's not they like it but it sits on the shelf in the same place as those games right like they can sit in the same price points they can sit in the same um in the same uh value space for the you know for the retailer by itself right a 20 dollar box here it is but uh, well, some of it, I think, was it was like stuff that the publisher had already. Yeah, I think more of the problem. No, I I get you, but I think that that's why I say it's like visual intrigue. Like I even love just the start of your digital art with within this stuff, like the pixel art on the you know for these things are really intriguing. If it had a little bit more visual fidelity to like a little bit more wow, can still be you know pixel art and everything else like that. But um, having that right there in your hand i think it really sway somebody and really turn it um in terms of the Wait, stuff but ask a question about that sean yeah. so because you've worked with more publishers than uh, i have would you say one more, <laughs> one, one more. <laughs> okay i was gonna say do publishers tend to want to see some differentiation or do they tend to want to uh have it integrate with their family more like be more similar a big or does por- it really depend yeah, a big portion is just like, okay, can I sell this, right? Visually, can I sell this, right? Is it striking enough that on that somebody is going to be intrigued enough to pick this thing up? Two, is the gameplay kind of like core enough that I can see it, uh, I can figure it out pretty quickly, depending on how crazy it is, right? Like if it's one of these mad, um, you know, board games with like tons and tons of different rules, 
uh, and loads of facets of gameplay, well then you have to build your own niche audience. You have to have your kind of creator club like before you really can, you know, get get involved because it might have, you know, some of these games have like hundreds of pieces. It's insane. Um, but it ends up just like getting you in the door with those types of stuff. Then then it's all about like, all right, like, do you have any do you have any background or you know do you have any audience within any of your own social media networks for that game? Right. A lot of these games end up having their own brand and everything else. Uh, and if you can build those things up over time, then you can start trying to get your foot into the door with the bigger groups. Now, a lot of the ways, though, you don't really need a publisher. You can just go to ACD and Alliance and just be like, try to build a direct one-to-one -one relationship with them. Those are the two big uh, board game distributors in the United States. And if you can get in with those people, basically it's just like email them, have a conversation, and show up at a, a couple of events and see if you can get them to play the game for a little bit. They will stock your game on consignment. So they take some amount of inventory, they put it into their distribution catalogs. Most of the United States of like small retailers and big retailers are, are buying from those distributors. If um, people want it and they're ground up, right, retailers are asking for it and requesting it or top down that the distributor is kind of trying to push it as a new product, you can get a couple of sales out of that and start trying to push your, your numbers and see it on shelves like pretty quick but it's just a, a matter of like talking to the right people and kind of getting in biggest win we've had was just like going to events genuinely like okay so it sounds like you're saying it, it's not a big deal to be a differentiator especially if you already have a community yeah but i think the biggest thing is just, i like I, i'll harp back to this is like can you visually sell a game and i love the premise of this i think it's it's just like cute i think that's that's the biggest thing that i like about this it's, um, to be honest. So, have you any want to go back to these things, Ryan? Have you got yeah. Like, uh, what's the top? What's the top game that you, from or top anything that you have that you're like, this could have been a winner. This is the thing that I I would want to develop the entire way through. Well, there's a fair amount of stuff that's I, I haven't even ha like put on here, the because I like I've something that doesn't even show up on there is I did a block dude in 3d and I just didn't want to make the puzzles for it. <laughs> so, Where's that uh, one? Can, is there any videos of that one on your, uh... uh, if you go to the, my Instagram, uh, oh, yeah, okay. that's, you'll have to scroll back a ways. Um, Understood. but that's the, the Instagram has a lot of stuff that I just haven't put out yet, but I put the, uh, Oh, that's pretty visually striking. I like that. Yeah, so that's that's what I'm working on currently. It's a uh, um, a tactics game that, uh, and yeah, if you scroll back <laughs> just a little more, there's the I, I essentially made a uh, like a grid based version of Marvel Snap, and then <laughs> nice. I uh, is it one of these? It, it was a little too yeah. It was this here. It was sort of a grid based version of Marvel Snap, and then I it was a little too derivative. So now I'm doing more of a. Uh, um, it's all about tactics and positioning and bumping characters off of the uh, arena and stuff. Nice. I'll go back any, to yeah. Go on, Calvin. Go on. Any chance is that um, also borrowing from an existing board game? Uh, I, I was thinking of Boop, which I played last weekend. I don't know if you've seen it or heard of it. No, I should. Oh, okay. Look that okay. Up. <laughs> it's, it's the same five by five grid, and you have to bump people off the stage. Yeah, it's. Uh, I know. Uh, the Keith Burgun has done mm -hmm. a lot of the like bumping characters around Horrible. and stuff. Yeah, you're right. I get so much joy over just like little characters running around on the screen. <laughs> so sick. <laughs> but um I'll go back to the original question though, right? So what what gets you excited about a project before you start it? Right? Before you start going in and saying, Can I make this? Because you have the skills to be able to to churn these things out to really get them there is it a mental exercise you just want to see it come to life like what's your what's your love of creating here um because there's a fair amount of stuff here that's like that procedural stuff yeah it's that because the the degree was technically the bachelor of innovation 
in game design and development. So there's that degree of innovation that I keep striving for in all these different projects where I'm like, oh, this is too... Because there's a couple that were like, oh, this is more of a story-based game jam and I wasn't as interested in continuing that. Or uh, like um, I did Idle Dice Roller for the GMTK game jam, mm -hmm. which ended up being fairly popular, but I just wasn't as interested in the... Uh, you know, number go up. You know, I have of a an instrumental about game. That. So. Do you still get plays for that on itch? Have you looked? Yeah, yeah. That is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I noticed, know. like, anytime I put in something even remotely idle based, like you, you get daily plays. It's pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, it's just funny that it's it's the stuff that I'm not as interested in. That it's like, oh yeah, everybody's gonna click on that one naturally. Yeah, this vortex boxes. This was the one that I was like. This could be cool. This yeah, this would, one this I just I didn't right now. I, I did like a basic like match three. It's like you know all you know all three things, and then it deletes. But I just I'd, I'd have to think about the design on this one a little more, and I was like, eh, I'm not as interested in doing that. Um, yeah, I think I need to add like arrows or something because these are all all of these are affected by different gravity. But you can't tell in this <laughs> basic <laughs> prototype. But this is, uh, I think, a decade old at this at least. No, I get it. But at what point do you hit in your own mind that you're like, okay, no more of this, no more of this one. I'm, I'm not working on this anymore. Like when's when is like that that cut off moment of I found the fun or I found what I what I want out of this. A lot of these are game jam projects, so yeah. you know it's forty eight hours. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is this is done because it's the end of the game jam. Um, and some of them are I just like the so like here the line writer one, yeah. I just it was just such a pain <laughs> to get working. I'm like VR is kind of hard to work with, and yeah, I've made some. I did. A... 48 hour game jam in VR as well too um, my god I think it was like 4 hours of just getting the project set up getting the headset there like making sure that we actually like had something <laughs> you know what I mean I don't think mm -hmm. we ended up coming out with an actual game in the end of the whole thing as well too we just we had like boxes we played we could do like game of life on a, on a, a 3D box all around you so you could just turn on things and turn them off but then they would all light up with different colors. So every generation, if it was just like grouped together, would be a, like a little shape of colors. So you just watch it play out in there with no sound, no music, no anything. One of the beauties of VR is you can do anything simple and all, at least look pretty and feel pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was just why I started this one. is because I'm like, like, Line Rider is simple. <laughs> like, this should they be too long. And then it took me like over a month when I was like, I really only wanted this to be a week or two. <laughs> What's that dedication feel like to finish something like that? You mean, with somebody who, you know I mean, look, works on a, uh, a good number of different projects throughout the year, uh, throughout your time, you seem very dedicated to, like, one thing, build this, get it to completion. In your own mind, like, that's, that's brilliant, like, to be honest. Um, do you think well, that that's I, a categorization? Completion or? is... Uh... Well, too, too it's more, certain... more I just get sick of it and then move on to the next thing. <laughs> but you uh, get you do get something working. You you have yeah. a, what I would say is you have the loop, right? The the dude line rides on the line and goes to some place and does some stuff. Where a lot of people, including myself, will completely fail out at like I hit one or two roadblocks and I'm like, fuck this, like bounce just bounce like never never open that project ever again full intention to want to but never never end up doing it in your own mind like where does that motivation come from to get to something i i just like sharing the creative process and just like ma making stuff that it's it's why i post a lot of stuff on social media even when it's just super simple and I just barely started a thing, is because, like, just to show the creative process. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I do a lot of journaling, and uh, 
Like I've kept up a daily journal since like 2018. All for this play. point. Um, I, I support all this. Like when it comes to innovation. Yeah, I think this project right here is my uh, the one I should go back to because this one is uh, Twitch plays hide and seek, basically. Oh, nice. All but, um, all multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. What are you using for that? Uh, well, I mean, this is all Unity and stuff. Um, no, yeah, but the the actual like multiplayer layer. For the, it, it's just the, just the, the Twitch chat. It just pulls in from the Twitch chat. Uh, so you use, use um, Twitch API, call into it, uh, and are players able to actually go out and move around the place and play, or is it just? Yeah, yeah. So you just put in the coordinates. Uh, oh, it's because it's on Instagram. It cuts off the. There's a map on the left side there. That you can yeah so that's what those letters are is just the oh okay the coordinates that you put to say which tree you want to move to so chat can chat can be typing in what they that's kind of cool that's a nice way to do it i like that how, yeah I, I think how hard it was, was just it, to integrate I it, it wasn't too bad yeah. like there was a couple of youtube tutorials that said here's how you do it um and then uh, like just in the course of googling like recently there was a thing called like muxy I think M U X Y, that does some of that Twitch integration stuff, but uh, because I've been seeing then... <laughs> from game developers' perspective, right, when we're talking about monetizing these products or like, you know, games, whatever I call them, products, it's something that we make to to try and sell. But anyway, um, get using Twitch as Twitch bits if you can integrate your game into that. Uh, into that ecosystem you can siphon off a percentage of the bits spent so like let's say if it was like hey if, if players want to play they have to spend 25 bits you get three percent of every 25 that ever gets spent so you can as a developer fee kind of like get a little bit more of, of that for free it's not it just kind of like comes out of the revenue stream which I think is like super interesting, but I don't know if you were able to ever like look into those types of things or ever explore. Yeah, I, I didn't get that far. Like it was basically it was just like hide and seek was hard to make fun, and the uh, the secondary idea was doing uh, you know vampire survivors against Twitch chat, <laughs> but I haven't played much vampire survivors, and it just that uh. I get too sucked into the innovation of a thing where I'm like, I don't want to just make a clone of something. So. No, I like it. How do you find that inspiration then uh, for innovation? Right in a, in a world full of out and out, you know, plus oneing and clones and everything else like that. How do you still consistently push yourself to be like, this is new. This is something that's interesting. I, I think it's. It's digging down and asking why for a bunch of things and digging down into like a theme specifically of like, uh, like, so this one's uh, Grand Theft Auto in a Sky City. Okay. <laughs> I just love how your character is really sad, but I love these planes. Yeah, the, the, uh, the uh, emotes are just completely randomized, so. <laughs> yeah, that was the, the basis of the characters was. The, the face they, they they started face first with like i wanted them to be like to emote and then i added the rest of the character on on top of that because there's so many pixel art games where they have like those tiny characters but i, I uh, wanted to add more of that story no, just in the emotions game. of the character yeah your, your pixel art has a unique style by itself um i love like all of the generations of the things feel very together in in one style it makes me think that like if um you, you know i mean obviously you're trying to brand off of like those types of things by itself right like it's yeah like one uh -huh. one line through the whole thing which we found out the other week <laughs> that the whole baba is is you like the developer for that game uh you know i mean does the exact same stuff and then makes parody games off of their own games <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> she totally mm -hmm. this by ourselves but um yeah I was, I was streaming on uh i was streaming that one on twitch for a little while there nice. that one's hard though <laughs> baba is, is you is hard it is yeah <laughs> just punch that person nice. 
yeah there that's that's the one moment there that i the like that's the i started that game based on the idea of you jump off a building and then you hijack a plane and then fly it around <laughs> so i was happy when i was able to get that moment because like this was like a week-long game jam yeah this was another game jam yeah i liked it when you grabbed the cop there <laughs> it's just was like ah it's only freaking out yeah the the reason the buildings are popping in and uh it's because it's just a whole... I just had a, a ton of uh, buildings generated, and then I just disabled all of them, and then based on where the character's looking. Hey. So it's it's a, like a very small amount of like level of detail sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It's very simple LOD. Totally works. So, this is also based on that uh, versus chat thing, was doing a mini, uh, mini golf. Twitch plays mini golf, basically. I love it. Where is your, your, you know what I mean? What were the games that you were playing when you were growing up? What were the things that excited you? I did a lot of DS stuff. I did a lot of traveling with my family. Mm -hmm. So I played a ton of Nintendo DS games, which ended up, <laughs> I did a bunch of spinoffs of games. So it's like I played Final Fantasy Revenant Wings, which was like an <laughs> RTS Final Fantasy, and I did uh, Kingdom Hearts three five eight days over two. <laughs> so that, that weird Kingdom Hearts spinoff. Uh, I never played any DS games at all. I never had a Nintendo console until like super super late. I got a Switch, and I hate it. And I bought it and never used it. It's just sat there. <laughs> it's just I, I get a lot there. of use out of it over lunch. I, I play games on it over lunch. That's not so bad. This your Twitch character? Yeah, yeah. So this is. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Kind of wish you'd come on as your as your gnome. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, well, like I said, I I thought Discord was trying to default to my uh, VTuber. Oh, I love it. Yeah, this is something I made in like three days and haven't updated, but <laughs> I've been using it for probably over a year at this point. No, I was surprised great. at how much Twitch streaming I've actually done. Do you find you get a, like a lot of engagement on those things? Like, what's your what's your goal with just twitch streaming in general it helps me focus when it's like i can't just pop on a youtube video because i'm on a twitch stream so be there like, be engaged be funny yeah it's it uh, it helps me focus it's just uh when there's a possibility of somebody looking over my shoulder i get stuff done <laughs> And it's it's fun to play games as well. Like it was, I I was doing indie games on Fridays for a while, but I've sort of switched it up and done more. Like because that was Little King story there. Mm -hmm. Which is your Discord? This one. That's Where a pretty Ill interesting note. It's kind of like pair programming, except you're pair programming with like a bunch of other people in a way, in terms of keeping you focused. Yeah, topic. yeah. I've had the same feeling, to be honest. The the times where I would. Twitch stream to literally zero views and just be like, watch one game developer lose their fucking mind. <laughs> in, in the, uh, at least I would be there for two and a half hours and I would be talking the entire time and I'm just listening to music and I can't be distracted. I really can't not be engaged. I have to make progress as well too. It's like if I get if I get stuck, I get stuck for like forty minutes or something like that. Like it becomes a bit of a problem. But what I never got so much was is like a lot of real engagement or anything like that um i'm you mean i'm not the yeah most there's fucking... i've i was just looking at it and i think i've streamed for no i think twitch said like 800 hours nice and there was i think one stream where i had like eight people <laughs> and it was like I, I just happened to title the stream like something about pixel art and that managed to grab people but most of the time i have if I'm lucky, a viewer. <laughs> Where do you want to go with your with your games in the in the future? Like for me, like personally, right? It's it's like I wanna have some I wanna have some titles out there on my own shtick that can be generating some passive income, uh, make some entertaining fun, but I'm okay with like I don't necessarily need the top innovation. I don't necessarily need, you know, uh, I just want something interesting and entertaining that's out there. Uh, we're talking about, like, 
building micro games for the years. So these 25 to 35 minute experiences, um, $2.99, maybe $4.99 if it's like really, really big. Try to get them out in two months uh, and single player kind of experiences. Get them there, get them to the market, get them in front of people uh, and, and try to allow those things then to, you know, fund a bigger side of life, right? Like I'm a, I love cars, big car guy. Uh, and I, I spent probably way too much money on car parts in like the last like two years or whatever, right? What's your ultimate goal when it comes down to just making these things in general? Is it just the process of, of the creation? You know what I mean? Do you really, do you want to get like one big hit out? Is there one thing that you want to really push forward for yourself? Yeah, the the mission statement that I uh, put like up on the wall was uh, fostering community through the joy of creation, nice. and, and that's why I gravitated towards games and stuff is because you know it's a collaborative process between just the player and the designer, um, and just if you have like multiplayer games and stuff, then that is more of the <laughs> fostering community and all that. In the future, do you want to move more towards more real-time ones? Real-time I, multiplayer ones? I, the couple of multiplayer games, like that one that you're looking at there. Yeah, the, uh, this one, the like, Explore the that's Maze, a, the Stab yeah, your, Shank Your Friends. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's a horror battle royale. <laughs> uh, All multiplayer I, I spent, as well, too. Is it well, and that was, and I spent a good week i think maybe more just on trying to get the multiplayer working yeah because i was using the unity's like beta multiplayer stuff oh, that just man. it was a bad idea and so i got it all the way up to the point of i could connect for my computer to the laptop on my network but then when i actually tried to play it with a friend it didn't work yeah and, uh, the multiplayer stuff because it's there's another one that's the uh, um there's like a hard. dragon one in there too that that we, we tried to do that for a game jam, and most of the time was spent on just debugging the multiplayer to find out that the college was just blocking the connection. No, <laughs> seriously. So, oh, that's disappointing. Yeah, I, I would like to make a multiplayer game function at some point, but <laughs> it's been such a pain. So. Oh, what am I doing? Guide your crowd to defeat the evil veggies. Tap the empty space to move. Tap the enemy to attack. Ow. Ow. <laughs> I'm failing. I'm failing. Ow. 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 Yeah, so this is the thing that I did over the last game jam that I really only made it in like a day. Because I just didn't have time. But... I like the concept though. So these, yeah, the yeah, red was... sections are damage zones. And I need to ow, ow. not. Ooh, I crashed on the game over. Okay, yeah. The, for some reason, I updated Unity, and now all my web builds are like, "Oh, there's problems. It oh. doesn't run." And I'm like, "Standard." Oh, I did. Standard. Yeah, standard. I like the juiciness. The bounce around is really nice. It's not just like an instant like teleport. Like there, you have like a little bit of of stuff. Going yeah, it's on it's in the it's sort of a, like a carousel of. It just it goes from each person and then says you know this person move here this person move there because uh, what i wanted to do was sort of like you have to draw out like uh you know you draw a line to avoid an attack or you draw like uh, you'd bounce to different uh safe zones with a certain amount of characters and stuff for sure but, you know for just a 48 hour thing or less <laughs> you know didn't get all that but how does how in your you know in your estimate right like how has itch helped or hindered you in terms of like you know, I mean game plays like do you do you look fondly upon itch as like a platform for being able to get your games out there in term you know i mean obviously we can just like take the project upload it there put it there it's great but like do you see a lot of engagement you know what i mean over time with these things I, I like itch for just like I, I think I get the most amount of engagement from itch, which is maybe one or two mm -hmm. <laughs> people viewing a thing. So, but something like Game Jolt or uh, IndieDB, um, I still kind of glance at the rankings on IndieDB, but it's like the 
really doesn't matter because there's so few views but uh no like itch i like the best just visually and just for dumping stuff yeah <laughs> it, it's nice i tr i i found that like instagram has been pretty good with just getting people to follow right if as long as you're putting out some striking stuff consistently that i can get some decent engagement because one of the biggest problems i find right when we're talking about indie developers or just like creating new things in general is getting that initial following getting that initial um you know group of people a community to to watch the development support the development as it's going forward just just basically by just you know straight engagement watching posts giving giving feedback and stuff like that too um uh, which has been how, do you have any goals around those things is it more just organic growth just keep posting just keep getting it out there and, and go from there or do you have any like micro strategies to try and that you're trying to do yourself to keep those like groups growing or trying like yeah, bring, the, it, bring it all together you know I mean what what I use social media for is is more like I said that journaling aspect of just I dumped all this stuff onto social media as like a at least I can go back and look and see, like, oh, I was doing this project at this time and this project is at this time. Because um, in terms of engagement, it it's, like, uh, especially because I post a variety of just nonsense where it's not, like, a specific theme. Um, I, I think that that, that know, doesn't help in terms of growth. But It's you. Yeah, but you know? it's, it's, yeah, it's you. It, which me as a variety of different things makes it a little more difficult for like you know that brand there's no like the little characters have become a brand but other than that there's not as much uh... I love these you just like yeah sit and, down and in and terms of start. Instagram the the art posts like this do the best the uh, the game posts don't do nearly as well mm -hmm. but on twitter like the game posts do a lot better so uh, do you find that these things oh, go on Calvin. sorry oh i was just gonna say i i definitely support your approach of just you know when i look at people and kind of see the the thread of what generally makes someone successful being prolific is like probably the number one thing <laughs> it's like you're just doing things you're posting them and keeping it keeps you accountable. The fact that you're journaling and reflecting uh, is extremely important. I def I mean, I think being prolific and reflecting are two extremely uh, necessary ingredients for for the engine. Uh, so I, I I very much support the way you're doing it because whether or not you get engagement at any point in time, if you want to press the gas pedal and go, I mean, it, all that stuff will help. Yeah. I love just that, like how kind of visually striking even just these as posts are. The stills by themselves are intriguing enough for me to go and say like, okay, what's going on here? And I love that. Um, but well, because that I think I am gonna slap the uh, the characters back in here at some point. I just yeah, I know. But you should. Yeah, and I'm, st mean... I'm still debating on whether I want to do the voxel characters or the pixel ones. I'm like, I think the pixel ones... Uh, it's it's still a toss-up. <laughs> I'm I, like, because... Uh, I love the 2.5D, personally. I love, like, when we, when we take, like, 2D sprites and stick them into a 3D world and then have, like, that kind of isometric style billboarded where they're always just, like, looking at you. Yeah, that's very much what I was... I enjoy that a lot too. Yeah, absolutely. Are you playing anything these days? Is there anything where, like, are you playing games and then they they give you inspiration by yourself and then you will go off and then start working on these these other projects? Yeah, and like I said, that's the the Friday I, I do I stream a game and some of that was just to make sure that I'm still playing and consuming other media and stuff. Always indie games, or are you? Do you like the trip? No, it, like, it was indie like... games for a while, and then Elden Ring came out, and I just mainlined that on <laughs> Twitch for a long time. So, New Fair DLC play. announced for Elden Ring. Already. Yeah, yeah. I can't play those games. 
<laughs> I, I, I genuinely can't play him. Like, maybe I'm just dumb. I am dumb. Definitely dumb. But, but I don't know. Like, I I can't hardball my head against the wall that hard for so long. Like, it just bugs me. I, it's not like a person who, like, play, plays games on easy mode either, but, like, I would just get frustrated and just, like, not progress at all. By yeah, all Elden means. Ring has the most accessibility in terms of what you can do with, like, summons and items and just leaving and leveling up and coming back i did a lot of that where i'm like oh <laughs> this is difficult i'm gonna just leave <laughs> yeah good. keep keep rubbing it in rubbing it in ryan on sean yeah no it's okay i'm fine with it <laughs> um in terms of all the indie games right so we've you know obviously seen in like the last number of years just like a exploding growth of new ones that have hit the market really done well by themselves has there any been any standouts for you that have like really like games that have really changed your perspective as a designer as a developer like really moved you personally i really love outer wilds <laughs> yeah okay yeah there's a couple of bits of fan art on there and that was like one of the first games i streamed on twitch uh i'm, I'm really bummed i didn't have the uh the vods saved off for that one yeah, I need to play that one. I played it for a little bit at my mate's house and was generally confused by the whole pocket universe stuff where you're just like all of a sudden zooming out and then everything gets really small but everything else gets really big and you're just in this kind of non-Euclidean world which was pretty awesome. But um, is there something about that game that, was, that really got you? I, I love the exploration aspect of it. It's like the, the different mysteries that are all like, it's a whole web of information where you can kind of go wherever, learn a little bit, and that'll help you learn something else over here and then learn something else over here. And you can just kind of go wherever, do whatever from the outset. Mm -hmm. It's just fun. Yeah, one of the, my favorite games that I always try to tell everybody to play is The Beginner's Guide. And it's by the same guy who made uh, The Stanley Parable. You can find it on Steam, but it's like a game designer's game. Like, if, if you grew up, like, working with the Hammer en Engine, or, you know, building Steam stuff or back in the day, like, it's a game designer talking through a story th through, like, this amazing world, and you're just kind of, like, going through their mind trap. Um, but it's the way that these things make you feel overall that really just, like, moved me. Like, I, I couldn't... The next two days, I just couldn't do anything. I genuinely went into work and was just like, "I am the worst. <laughs> I am the worst game designer that there ever has been. I will never live up to these standards. I cannot. I can't do this anymore." Uh, it totally wrecked me for like a couple of days, and I kind of wondered for this kind of for the both of you. Like, have you either of you had any of those types of experiences with with certain games out there in, in the wild? Like, has anything ever just, like, just moved you to the point of, this is cool. I like this. What the hell is that made out of? Uh, they're pixel blocks. They're a defunct thing from, like, the 2000s. <laughs> that, uh, which, they, uh, I went to a, a convention recently that had, uh, things that, like, Pixio, I think. Mm -hmm. They were magnetic versions of the same idea. And I was like, oh, that's a lot better than the, those little plastic blocks, because <laughs> The way those link up on the sides, they get stuck. <laughs> you gotta like smash them apart. So. Yeah. To uh, address your question, Sean. So, I, so certainly the game for you was really emotional. But I had this question asked to me very recently, and I'll ask it back to you guys. But the question was different than what is your favorite game of all time. It was if you could erase your memories of a game, so that you can experience it again for the first time, what would it be? And that's kind of a question on first impression and influence. Uh, so I'll give I'll, I'll give a answer to your question, which is mine would be Dynasty Warriors 2. Because the first time I hopped into it and saw this army about around me, you know, because back then they, they never had that sort of thing. It really changed my conception of what games could do. And it was such a strong first impression, even though the game is like so, so uh straightforward so um that that's sort of a game that 
I mean, it didn't move me emotionally, but it really, uh, I don't know, inspired me in a way. I like that. So, another way to approach that question. It was a time to where, like, there just weren't that many characters on screen. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm fighting 20 people at once? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the hell is happening over here? So it sort of sounds like if you were to be able to relive that first impression of Beginner's Guide, you might want to do that. I don't oh, know. Oh, dude, I'd shoot myself with that ray gun every <laughs> single time. Are you kidding me? I would do it probably yeah, yeah. multiple times a year. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, it's, no. it's between that and uh, tripping acid on my birthday and playing uh, Celeste for eight hours <laughs> straight. It just yeah, fucking... Yeah. Yeah. This is sick! I'm just there like, oh, I, I know what they're doing. I see it. Yeah. I see their story. It's so good. I loved it. I loved every minute. So I of guess it. same same question to you, Ryan. I mean, you can approach it whatever angle you want, but like, what, uh, what, what kind of game experience really moved you, or what's what's kind of if you could first wipe your mind and play any game again, what would it be? I mean, there's a few that I could throw on that list, but I feel like I should <laughs> mention Borderlands here. This is an yeah. entire yeah shrine to borderlands so uh that that was a very uh that's still like a very base part of me <laughs> and my game design and all that is i, I love that franchise the last couple could... of games have been a little iffy but <laughs> yeah just I, yeah, borderlands yeah. one was your your favorite or was there yeah that was like fell in love instantly just off of that trailer with the because they had like a um sort of semi-realistic style and then they switched to doing that line art style and then when they did that that's when it was like okay i th oh, they man. dropped a trailer that was like i i love this so much and i that's i basically bought an xbox to play borderlands and then play borderlands 2 on my pc but <laughs> i love it did you play multiplayer or solo or are you just pretty much sure all both? solo i did some i actually did some of the versus multiplayer in borderlands with my sister <laughs> i never knew they had that they look exactly yeah Me neither. they they actually had pvp in the first borderlands there's a couple of arenas you can uh walk into and fight each other it's not balanced at all like yeah, you can just use you can just use mordecai and throw the bird out and just the other person dies but <laughs> <laughs> it, it did exist i love that it was a great game I, I don't know what happened in the franchise. I tell you, the last one I bought and then refunded. And honestly, I couldn't play it. The amount of like particles that were happening on the screen, the, the, the amount of like shininess that was happening just when you were like shooting guns or, or things were coming back at you really affected me, like really affected my eyes. I, I couldn't handle really like playing the game to its like fullest potential. I think like 45 minutes in, I got motion sickness and I... I don't get that i don't get that with games at all it was very confusing of why i have that like i have a vr headset and i don't even get that with that but just the the way that the the lights and everything were just you know constant like i kept getting berated with it and i just really was like oh this is kind of off-putting yeah never, those are definitely into it. words to describe it <laughs> constant and berating and it's it's uh, borderlands is a lot and they've just kind of leaned into it more and more Oh, I like that. And if you could take one thing, because I know that you uh, took all of your characters or you, you built a bunch of new pixel characters to like match into that style. I saw you print out a poster all in the Borderlands style. Yeah, is, yeah. Is there something that you take from those games into your own games? Like in terms of like their design philosophy or, or um, something that you've learned from those games that you implement yourself consistently? Uh, I don't know if there's anything, like, just because what I make tends to be... Kind of off the wall, everything all around the place. Yeah, yeah. I'd say um, the procedural generation part of it, though, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that's that's a through line with a lot of my stuff, is I'm like, I don't want to make levels. <laughs> I don't want to make bespoke stuff. I'll just have the computer spit out something. No, I love that. Yeah. I'm going to spend 14 hours making, making a tool that's going to do my job for me, so I don't have to do anything else around all of this. Is there places where you've learned uh, new techniques or like um, uh, certain ways that you've found over time that have worked better for your procedural generation? Like 
whether it be like how you've dealt with your heuristical models, have you worked with genetic algorithms or anything else like that? No, nothing too specific, but, uh, and that's, uh, you know, so like with the genetics, I have all those characters, I could play with that. Um, and I've done a little bit, but, uh, so I know you, you, you have a steady job right now, and maybe eventually you'll want to pull the trigger and try to do this solo, whatever the circumstances. But um, one of the reasons we did this podcast, and the, when we envisioned who might want to watch us, are people that are strong on the creation side and creativity side, but maybe don't necessarily know how to get commercialize and make money on it. So one of my questions to you is like, what are what are some of your biggest questions when it comes to how to you know maybe start a studio or or make money if you if you have any or 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 if you're still just in the creative process that's fine yeah i it's one of those things of like i would love to be making stuff full time but i also don't really want to uh, compromise the vision of like you know let's make number go up so that <laughs> like like the mobile game design of like you know you have to level up all your different characters and <laughs> that just doesn't appeal especially when it's I'm doing stuff like procedural generation where i could just crank out a ton of stuff it just doesn't feel as necessary to say like no you have to do this you have to level up this character and just you have to monetize this and that and the other thing but mm-hmm I mean, that in itself it's a, is a good observation and question, which is how can you, if you, if you decide to do it, how can you uh, make money off of a game that doesn't use, you know, everything you just described? I think that's a totally valid thing because if people can figure out how to stay more to their artistic vision while making money, I mean, that's, that's wonderful. People can do that. Yeah, I because... I, uh... Yeah, I have it somewhere where I had like, uh, you know, tried to come up with ideas that are monetization that aren't just like, um, I think some of it was like, uh, at least for the procedural aspect was, you know, buying certain characters and stuff. It's just like, you can, uh, like a, uh, like Crossy Road where you just have a whole bunch of characters and you can just buy each individual character, um. The, the one game I worked on for a while was uh, Altercation, which was a sort of Smash Bros with custom characters. And then one of the things I was thinking of monetizing was the, uh, essentially like the loadouts. Where it's like you'd have a couple that you could have as your defaults, and then if you wanted more, you could buy more slots to make more characters. Um, yeah, th that's to definitely legit stuff, and that's kind of that's definitely topics that we're also interested in talking about and figuring out is what are alternative monetization models exactly for what you're saying. So no, it's good stuff. I, I definitely wanted to hear what you're interested in so that we could, you know, try to research and talk about ourselves. Yeah. And then, well, yeah. I guess then the, but the blocker then feels like it's like by doing those things, you're breaking your own rules, right? You're, you're going against the, what you feel like is like, core to the vision of the game you're like adding something for the sake of like and eh, maybe yeah it, breaking apart right? the yeah. game to sell bits and pieces of it yeah 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 but it's just selling a game yeah like what we try to think about in terms of when we're trying to like build build like a holistic mobile game to sell right is we'll build the core experience and we don't then start thinking about like how to fragment things down it's like okay, we know that we can put some monetization here. Okay, great. But, like, the base still has to be fun. Everything still has to be entertaining there. Like, it still has to be fair fair and free at that point. And then we can start to, like, ramp up and ratchet up the, the extras on those things. And some of those things can be as simple as, like, oh, like, you're in an RPG and you want to get uh, health potions right now. It's, like, convenience purchases rather than, like, the player can still go out and go and do their thing, go get those those recipes they can still build those things obviously we add a little bit of grind and everything into there and that's where then like some of that convenience fee then gets paid in but um we're really like focusing on at least making the game as fun as possible within that core batch at the same time but i totally feel you like if it feels like a compromise it feels like a compromise i guess the thing is like 
I, I, I don't know if I asked this, like, originally, but, like, I think the biggest blocker to this, like, polishing topic, right, like, getting that game from the prototype stage, or where would you say that you're leaving off some of these games? Is it at the prototype stage? Is it just because they're game jams and we're just, we just don't want to continue working on them after the game jam? But some of them, like, are, you have, like, pushed forward a considerable amount, right? So the the puzzle game uh, that you're working on right now, uh, how far do you think you, you really want to take that in your own mind? Or is it just, do you have like a milestone list of goals that you want to accomplish? And then once you're there, you're going to evaluate and try to see like where it goes from, from there. Like, like so this, this tactical thing that I'm working on is I want to work on this one for a while. Cause it is, it's, it's emerging a lot of, of ideas of like that altercation thing that I worked on for like a year mm -hmm. on and off. And then um, it's just uh, that, that one just has a lot of design possibility that I want to explore. Um, and when I know for monetization stuff, <laughs> that's been a, a video like idea in the back of my head for YouTube. It's uh, doing a, like the most monetized game possible. Oh yeah. Uh, game of war. Like, that's uh, it. <laughs> Well, just because I have those characters where it's just like the, you could monetize the, you know, like merging the characters and you get another character and the, um, yeah, it was, it was going to be the most evil game and then just slap as much monetization because it's like you could do NFTs and all that other stuff on top of that. Sure. Would you ever just want to do a Steam paid game then? Because that's the one where you least have to compromise your, your design. Yeah, and that's I think where I want to go with this tactical thing that I'm working on. That that's like the the goal for the year is to release something on Steam or Google Play. Um, and I, I'm not even picky about like if it it's, gets monetized or how big the game is. I'm just like I want to go through the process of releasing something. No, I love that. Yeah, Sweet. it's been a, it's definitely like looking at your your backlog. Like it's that's a lineage of everything. It's like get it get it to where you want it to be, and then go on to something else but there's a line that you can draw through a lot of these things which is really cool um uh in terms of that then when you get that out right because it's going to happen right there's going to be this whole polish time and area that that is going to be difficult right um you have a lot of experience in obviously just building your own art style and building your own stuff uh from there like where are you going to find that vision or that because that seems like almost like it's going to be a new skill that you're going to add to this to this um portfolio of yours as well too is like really pushing that visual fidelity of your own your own products or are you going to are you going to be thinking about that yourself like is, is that a scary thing is that just something that you're going to have to deal with when you get there or you know you know, how did you go about even learning those skills as well, too? You know, like, art by itself, like, I think a lot of people who are doing just development or just game design don't necessarily have that crossover skill of, like, building, you know, like, designing or, or doing lighting in the right way or, um, you know, building nice art assets and having to go into Blender and, like, make all of, you know, 3D things and everything like that, like... Is that if do you enjoy that side of things as well too, like the art side of things? Yeah, yeah, I've I've because it's the like on Mondays I do like art and game development as my stream thing, um, and I found I like the the art aspect a lot. Um, I get, it depends on what I'm doing because like when I'm doing just like fan art of and I just switch up my little characters and then you know slap on whatever. Like, when I have a reference that I can just pull colors from and stuff, that's nice and easy. But when I'm trying to make something bespoke and new, it's like, oh, this is... I, I gotta learn stuff. <laughs> this is difficult. So it's like, oh, it took me a full two hours just to figure out how to make a tree. But it's one of those things that once you do it once, it gets easier the next time. Sure. Yeah. Do you like that process of bashing your head against the wall a little bit? Yeah, yeah, I... I I'm I'm never good at mastering things, but I love starting to learn things. So I I've yeah that, that very much master of none <laughs> is how I. That's uh... what AI is for content generation. They'll, they'll okay. do it all for us. That's always the answer. <laughs> I to be fair, I have been using Midjourney a little bit for the concept art 
I've just been like throwing things into art channels and just being like, kind of like this, it's this thing, whatever yeah. the fuck that is. I don't know. Yeah. Sort of like this. Make it cool. Um, are there in a lot of these different creations you you have tools that you've either crafted along the way, built your own repositories of things. What are your top tools that you use? Either like asset plugins or just your own code base stuff that you've followed along and, and kept building with. Because I'll give you an example for me. It's like like Lean Tween. It's like one of the greatest things that I've used for just like procedural animations or just being able to like write a line of code to just move things around the place as in very smooth ways. And I kind of use it in like all of my projects that I do for myself. Yeah, I've, uh, it's pretty much just the characters that I've pulled over between projects just because the different projects have varied pretty wildly and what they are, there isn't as much crossover, but, uh, um, the grid based stuff as I've done a fair amount of grid based projects. So some of that code has evolved. Um, but yeah, no, no, like asset plugins and stuff. I get that. Yeah. That I know of. We're running close, close to time, right? I wanted to ask you a couple more yeah. questions if you don't mind. But like, is there stuff outside of games that influences you in terms of when you're making stuff? Uh, you know, movies, books, even just like nice walks on sunny days. Like, what, what gives you that inspiration to kind of honestly to keep going? Because I think anybody who has really tried to create their own pursuit in making, crafting anything, it can be a very lonely and, and a bit depressing world, like at times, right? Especially when things aren't necessarily going the way that we want them to do, or we sit down after a long day of work, you know, we've already done our full-time job, and then all of a sudden we're sitting down again, and, you know, pumping another couple of hours into the computer, and you know, trying to find that vision, try to push something forward a little bit more. Like, where do you find that motivation within yourself? There's a fair amount of just, like, if I'm not making something, I don't feel good. <laughs> like, I just, I, I have to be making something. I think that's, like, uh, Edmund McMillan has said that before, too, where it's, like, I just have to be creating um because I've tried to sit and like take a break and I'm like, I'm just going to watch a TV show for a while or just play a game for a while. But even when I was doing like Elden Ring, I was still streaming it where it was still some kind of like putting myself out there. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if there's like a specific like the, the best way to motivate myself, but <laughs> there's just that kind of like interior thing of like I have to be making something. Yeah, just have that yeah. that creative bug. That Especially after me. doing it for so long, I think you developed a habit of it, and that that's a good habit to have. It's like not brushing your teeth; you feel disgusting. Not creating that, if you feel disgusting, hey, that's good. <laughs> Probably. Wow. Man. Yeah, no, I I have a lot of routines and things. Good, good. But... Any that have like good served you well that you would share out. Like I said, the the journaling, the journaling. I, I like a lot, just for it, even like just as a memory thing of like you know remembering things that you did or it, it's kind of fun where it's like oh man I haven't been here in forever, like you know when was the last time oh, and then I go look at my journal and I'm like oh I was at Olive Garden four years ago it has been a long time <laughs> since I've been but I can just look at this specific date and everything, which is kind of fun. Yeah, I haven't done it since uh, for at least three years or something like that now. I think like since going from the home, like now it's all work from home. I don't tend to, to do it as much, but I used to always just have like the same black unruled journal that I would use all the time and just draw, 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 not drawing anything, but just like game design idea, idea, just random concept whatever, and just like throw it all in there. Um, but I've fallen out of that pattern completely and utterly. It's very difficult for me right now to like get back into it. I think it's like a scary proposition to just like also kind of talk to yourself through a book, you know, you're just having to like just write your own, your own thoughts and things. And it's just yeah, like... well, I would say, yeah, my journal entries are not interesting necessarily. It's a lot of just like, here's what I did then. And here's what I did at this point. And here's what I did at this point. But it's still a list of like, especially if you go like on a vacation or something and you write down, oh, I was at this place and this place and this place. 
that's a lot more helpful. No, um, I get that. Yeah, yeah. The, and because the, I, I do digital journaling, so I use the Journey app. And uh, then there's also a, I have a time tracker app on my phone that also is, is hugely helpful when it's, because I say daily journaling, but sometimes, you know, I'll miss a day and I'll go back and say, um, and I try to take a couple of pictures every day as like a reminder of like, oh, this is what I was doing at this time. So what are you, uh, what are you using for your time tracker? Uh, I think it's just, oh, uh, a time logger, a time logger. You just, whatever you're doing drop a little thing in there and just start a timer yeah yeah it's got and it just has a a list of like here's all the different activities and stuff nice but and because it also has an ability to do the like a report of uh like i could look at say like like i can do like a pie chart yeah there's a a pie chart of uh, where you're spending your time yeah yeah, so, you know, like, a third of it's on sleep, and there's a good chunk on work, and then... Nice. Nah, yeah, those things are really handy. I try to tell people, like, one of the... When I was... When I first got, like, my first couple of jobs in the industry, and I was just, like, kind of constantly working at the job, I would come home, you know, six, seven o'clock or something like that, most, you know, most days or whatever, uh... And I would be done. I wouldn't do anything else. I would just sit at home and and just, like, talk to my roommates or, like, do nothing else, right? Like, did that for, like, a couple of years and then realized, like, oh, okay. I'm not really... (laughs) Nothing else is, like, happening here, right? And it was a big portion of it was... I had to have this mindset of don't let work be your day, right? Like, don't just go to the office, do your... Do your time and then come back and then do nothing, right? Like that can't be just the only thing that you do in that day. That's like a block of time like sleep that you have to end up doing. But then everything outside of that, you have to try and find something else to do that day. Uh, And that mindset change really like helped me to push into those things. But the work from home slash like um, contract work got me more and more into the timers and really tracking the time of like, where am I spending this? You know, like how much time am I really spending on just procrastinating, right? Oh, I watched this 20 minute YouTube video here and then I went off and made a coffee for five minutes and then by the time I come back it's like oh 45 minutes has passed it's like oh shit like I mean you do that enough times in the day it's just like you're just like you can see the time seepage kind of like waste away but do you find that you like um hyper focus into the numbers at all or are you just you're just okay with just just keeping that track just you don't really yeah I, I just use it as a, as a track I don't have like a you know, I'm going to spend this much more time on this and this much more time on that. Um, oh, fair play. You don't have my anxiety <laughs> reflex. <laughs> Look, we're getting towards the end. Do you have anything, uh, any other questions? Calvin, you got any other questions? Oh, I'm good. Well, cool, Ryan. I mean, I appreciate you honestly jumping on. I appreciate you just being uh, our first Patreon uh, member and, and just, you know, I mean, giving us also, you know, in the same way that continually posting uh continually just uh trying to put stuff out that we believe in just you know uh and having these conversations like they help us they keep us motivated uh to just honestly just to keep learning um we like to just keep meeting people within the industry and you know who are doing cool stuff and just doing cool stuff on their own uh and genuinely just uh fair play to you kudos you know i mean you're really crushing it out just with continually making uh, you know, finding the time to make stuff for yourself and nobody can take that away from you. And, you know what I mean? I really applaud you for, for continuing that aspect of stuff. Mm-hmm. I re- yeah, yeah. And I, I, I wouldn't mind coming back too, because th- this was mostly just a portfolio showcase, but I wouldn't mind talking like current news and stuff too. Oh yeah, we can do that all the time. Absolutely. For sure. Honestly, do you mean the only thing that really popped up today, we were looking at this uh, Street Fighter game that calvin was showing me and then i don't know i just didn't i didn't really look (laughs) i didn't really look to be honest after that so we'll have to do it another time but um i'm looking forward to it thank you everybody appreciate you guys yeah thanks for coming on man